morning. Uh, I'd like to welcome back uh, Reverend Bartel this morning. And I wanted to start with an announcement from Hildy. For those of you on the live stream, uh, Hildy is letting everyone know that ACT has have some things coming up, and feel free to reach out and contact her if you are interested uh, in hearing more about what is ACT is doing. So let us begin. The grace and peace of Christ be with you. Today we celebrate the 23rd Sunday after Pentecost a time when the church was challenged to adopt a godly way instead of seeking human power. My name is Chris Wilson, and I'm grateful to worship with you today. And I'm especially grateful to be here just to see all of the faces in person again. It is honestly such a difference for somebody who spends my time mostly in the digital world to be able to actually be with other people in this space. Now let us pause for a moment and be present in this space. Let us in silence reflect on the truth of how we feel in body and in spirit in this moment. God has called us together today in worship. Let us give that call voice with our call to worship. People of God, Look about creation and see the faces of those we know and love. Neighbors and friends, brothers and sisters, a communion of kindred hearts. People of God, look about and see the faces of those we hardly know. Strangers, sojourners, forgotten friends, the ones who need an outstretched hand. People of God, look about and see the images of God assembled here today. In me, in you, in each of us everywhere. God's spirit shines for all to see. People of God, come. Let us worship together. The peace of the Lord be with you. Share a sign of peace with one another by commenting on the live stream page, sending a text to someone, or just shouting peace to the world. And together we will say the gathering prayer. O Holy One, your compassion is for all people and all creation. Help us to share the burdens of your heart concerning our troubled and too often violent world. Even now our nation is much disturbed and alarmed at the violence and danger that lurks in our midst. Give, us, give to us and our leaders the wisdom and insight on how to pursue swift justice. Let us also be numbered among those who are reaching out to bring a new way for a new day. Lead us then to ask ourselves how we can be active participants in bringing Jesus' way and to our city and our world. Amen.
Spirit, open my heart to the joy and pain of living as you love me. Receiving and in giving, Spirit, open my heart. Write your love upon my heart. As my love, I go my story in each thought I heard and feed. May my living bring you glory, Spirit, open my heart. To the joy and pain of living, as you love, may I love, in receiving and in giving, Spirit, open my heart. May I weep with those who weep, share the joy of sister, brother, in the welcome of Christ. May we welcome one another, Spirit, open my heart to the joy and pain of living. As you love, may I love in receiving and in giving, Spirit, open my heart. Good morning, Annapolis United Church of Christ. How are you this day? Well, um, last Sunday we had uh, three children here and that was very wonderful. Um, so um, I guess this morning, you're all gonna have to be children of God and just enter into the spirit of our little brief time together. So um, children, draw close and hear these words that I'd like us to think about in a, um, reflective kind of way. And really, it's a, it's a little snippet from the scripture that we're going to read this morning. And it, these are the words of Jesus, where we're just going to abbreviate it for now, where Jesus said, others, uh, thank you, others lord it over others, and they exercise great authority over them. But Jesus says, but it will not, but it shall not be so among you. But whoever would be great among you must be your servant. So that's what we're going to think about this morning. So um, when you go into a restaurant, you know, the uh, person seats you at a table. And then what's the next thing that happens? Pardon? Yeah, you're greeted by a server. Thank you. So um, then you go. <laughs> so then uh, you go in and the, the server says, uh, you know, how may I help you or have you decided or would you like something to drink first or, you know, all, all that sort of thing. Um, so then she or he writes down what, uh, what you want and they go back to the kitchen and, um, and see that it's uh, happening. Um, now, Jesus wasn't talking about restaurants and uh, servers necessarily there, although he very well could have been. Uh, but we're talking about something much sort of bigger and, and broader than, uh, than, than that. Um, so I would like us to do this day is think about all the people that, that serve us and then what is the takeaway for, for us in, this, in the meaning of this scripture. So um, what's your, one of your favorite, this is what I was gonna ask the, the children, what's one of the favorite things you order um, when you go to a restaurant. Now, my little granddaughter, um, they're, they're just infatuated with mac and cheese. That's always. Or we go to a restaurant and they have wonderful seafood or something because they, they live in Maine part of the time. And uh, you would think they would order like some fish or scallops or something like that. 
No, they want a hot dog. Heaven knows where that hot dog, what that came from. But anyway, so what's some of your um, uh, favorite things to order when you're eating out? Don't say mac and cheese and a hot dog. <laughs> Milkshake. Milkshake. Well, that's good. Anything else? A what? Okay, I'm okay. A burger. Yeah, thank you, thank you. Crab cake. Lobster. There you go. Right. <laughs> okay, so that, that burger or that lobster or crab cake, how did that get to that, uh, how did that get to that uh, restaurant? Okay. Yeah, well, okay, so the chef, or somebody in the kitchen had to cook it. How did it get to the kitchen? A truck. So um, a trucker had to truck it in. And where'd the trucker get it? From a fisherman, right? Or if uh, uh, a burger, <clears throat> probably from a farmer who raised beef cattle or something. So there's, there's all kinds, you know, we've been hearing a lot about the chain of command lately and how everything is kind of backed up and if you order like kitchen cabinets, you might not get them um, in any time, time soon. Um, so we're, it's good for us to think about. That's why I like sometimes when we have uh, prayers at church dinners or even at home for that matter, um, where I think it's wonderful when we say, Thank you for this food which has been set before us and those that have prepared it. And for the truck driver that brought it to us, for the fisherman who caught it, or the farmer who raised it. And it helps us to understand that uh, we are all dependent on other people to make our life whole. So we depend on other people who are serving us in many, many ways. All right, children, do you have anything else you would like to uh, add? <laughs> Does this help you understand more clearly um, what Jesus might have meant when he said, when he said, others lord it over others, but it is not so with you. That's kind of a big thing. So we're always thinking about ways we, should, we could go this forever and ever in the church here. What are the ways is your church a servant in the community here uh, about you? Or even you know, in the wider community as far as that goes. Um, so um, I'll let you ponder those and we'll let it set right here for now. Thank you children for coming and bringing your best selves and thoughts forward. Now. Let us uh, close with the um, prayer that Jesus taught us as we together lift our hearts and voices in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Your kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our sins as we forgive. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. I invite you now to draw near to the uh, presence of God and um, in a spirit of uh, reflection and introspection, trusting in God's forgiveness, let us in silence confess our failings and acknowledge our part in the pain of the world.
before God with the people of God, I confess to turning away from God in the ways I wound my life, the lives of others, and the life of the world. May God forgive you, Christ renew you, and the Spirit enable you to grow in love. Amen. Before God, with the people of God, we confess to turning away from God in the ways we wound our lives, the lives of others, and the life of the world. May God forgive you, Christ renew you, and his spirit enable you to grow in love. Amen. Listen now in the reading of scripture for the word and wisdom of God. We open our hearts to the word and wisdom of God. Our reading today is from Psalm 119, verses one through eight. Happy are those whose way is blameless, who walk in the law of the Lord. Happy are those who keep his decrees, who seek him with their whole heart, who also do no wrong, but walk in his ways. You have commanded your precepts to be kept diligently. Oh, that my ways may be steadfast in keeping your statutes. Then I shall not be put to shame, having my eyes fixed on all your commandments. I will praise you with an upright heart when I learn your righteous ordinances. I will observe your statutes. Do not utterly forsake me. So ends the reading. Hear now the gospel of Jesus Christ. Then they will hand him over to the Gentiles to be mocked and flogged and crucified, and on the third day he will be raised. Then the mother of the sons of Debedee, Zebedee came to him with her sons, and kneeling before him, she asked a favor of him. And he said to her, what do you want? She said to him, declare that these two sons of mine will sit, one at your right hand and one at your left in the kingdom. But Jesus answered, you do not know what you are asking. Are you able to drink the cup that I am about to drink? They said to him, we are able. He said to them, you will indeed drink my cup, but to sit at my right hand and at my left, this is not mine to grant, but it is for those for whom it has been prepared by my father. Then the 10, the disciples, heard it. They were angry with the two brothers, James and John. But Jesus called them to him and said, you know that the rulers of the Gentiles lord it over them and their great ones are tyrants over them. It will not be so among you, but whoever wishes to be great among you must be your servant. And whoever wishes to be first among you must be your slave. Just as the son of man came not to be served, but to serve and to give his life a ransom for many. The word of God in scripture, for the word of God among us, for the word of God within us.
And now may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. So the title of the scripture as you, of the sermon this morning is um, The Case of the Pushy Chevy Mother and the Brash uh, Brothers. Um, I kind of uh, wanted to give this a little bit of an Agatha Christie sort of, uh, you know, uh, tang, uh, twang to it this morning, um, because this is a situation that has been described in Scripture, not just in one of the Gospels. We always like it, you know, as uh, biblical theologians and historians. If you have a story that appears two times, that's better than just being appearing one time, uh, because it's kind of lens that like, well, this story must have really circulated, you know, quite widely in the, in the early church, if it's in two or three or even in all of the Gospels. So here we have um, Mark's um, um, uh, Gospel, and we have it uh, also in um, uh, Matthew's uh, Gospel. So in Mark's go Gospel, um, James and John are the two brothers that are referred to here. And um, so in, in Mark's gospel, James and John say to Jesus, grant us to sit, one at your right hand and one at your left hand, in glory. And um, it reminds me of um, um, whether you're a parent or grandparent or just have had any role in raising children or not. Um, have you ever had any children of yours uh, or that you know of has gone to you and said, I want you, I'm going to ask you to do something for me and I want you to say whatever it is in advance, I want you to say yes. And then, the, then they say, please, 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 say yes whatever I ask. Okay, we've, we've, I think most of us have experienced that. Well, that's kind of what's going on here with James and John, these two brothers. They're disciples, the followers of Jesus. Uh, this was not at the very beginning of his ministry, so they'd been around the block a time or two with Jesus. They kind of, you would hope, would sort of have known the score uh, a bit. But it seems like they were, uh, had a lot to learn yet when they said, grant us these two great places, the left and the right hand, when you come in glory. Well, in Matthew's gospel, we have a little different twist to the story. It's the mother who comes to Jesus, and um, she kneels before him, and she asks him a favor. And when she talks about her two boys, you know, you can't blame a mother for wanting to be looking out for her boys, her children, whatever, in this case, these two, um, two brothers. Um, it would be sort of like if, um, if you were a great uh, uh, supporter of the President of the United States and uh, you had two boys that were very active in the campaign, they might, the mother might come up to the President-elect and say, um, you know, I've got these two boys and um, I think one would be a good uh, uh, director of the budget. 
And the second one, I think, would make a great Secretary of State. You know, and so that's what mothers, mothers do in a certain way, maybe. They're always looking out for the interests and to promote their, their sons. So in one sense, um, I might have given uh, the mother and the two boys a little bit of a rough treatment when I called her the pushy shovey mother and the brash brothers, because they were like looking out for them. But maybe that's a little too tough, but you know, they're kind of one of the reasons I chose that as a sermon title because I wanted it to catch your attention so that we would, we would see the contrast that is uh, going before and what understand more clearly what Jesus himself had to uh, deal with. So um, now there's a couple of things. The, the brothers made their request uh, in the open. In the open, by that I mean the, the, the other 10, scripture says, the other 10 disciples were present and they were watching all this going on, whether it was the mother kneeling before Jesus and saying, oh, please, please, please uh, give my sons these places of honor, or whether it's the two boys themselves saying, we think that we can be you know, uh, helpful to you in the kingdom by one on your right and one on your left. So um, Jesus uh, is, hears all this, and um, the brother's request is in the open, in the, in the hearing of all these. Um, uh, the other 10 disciples. And Jesus is um, more mellow uh, with them. Sometimes it's, you can read his words as being harsh or, or, or soft, I guess, when he essentially says, you don't know what you're asking. You know, you're asking way more than you are actually uh, in admitting to or capable of... Uh, of uh, acting on. And so Jesus then explains, as it were, the rules of the kingdom. And it gets a pretty deep at that point. And after that, then Jesus says, you know how these other Gentiles, other people, they lord it over others. We've all seen situations where people get lorded over. That's one of the things I was going to ask the children. What does it mean what, 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 when somebody lords it over, over another? Well, it means that you're like in an exploitative kind of way, perhaps, or you're, you've somehow gotten puffed up with your own power and authority, and you think that you can rough, rough, play roughshod over other people, you know, easily. Well, so as, this, as the scripture uh, progresses, you know, just a little bit uh, into this, this is going on. There are parents who are bringing their children to Jesus. And um, they are actually kind of like, you know, how sometimes parents are sort of rambunctious when they're looking out for their kids, that's what makes a good parent, isn't it? When you're aggressively wanting to better things, you know, for, for your children. And so when um, these parents come bursting in, or as the disciples thought, came barging into the presence of Jesus because they wanted Jesus to bless their children. And so the disciples were busy about higher matters maybe higher matters than what had just preceded this about seeking elevated places in, in the kingdom of God. Um, but the disciples try to shush them away and just sort of brush them aside. But Jesus is having none of it. And neither are the parents because they are, they are persisting. They want their children to be blessed by Jesus. <laughs> and he said some of these, I think they're very beautiful words. Let the little children come unto me and forbid them not, for of such is the kingdom of heaven. I know that you know that because I can see you're recognizing the scripture. Isn't, isn't it a, a beautiful, inviting, sort of warm stage that Jesus set here? 
Except for, I like the old, the old translation of this one. Sometimes I don't, but I like this one. Suffer the, we don't use suffer anymore. Suffer the little children to come unto me and forbid them not, for of such is the kingdom of heaven. So in that, Jesus is kind of going back to the pushy shovey and the brash brothers. He said, because um, of such is the kingdom of God. The children, because the children are not in places of power and, and authority, but they are ones that need to be ministered to. And you should be as humble and receptive as a child is. So, who humbles yourself as a child. So, when you get, go back to the situation that has just come, we have just come from, with Jesus having rejected the request of the mother and, the, and both of the boys. It's almost like Jesus is saying, we need to have a chat. We need to talk this over because you are evidently not really responding to my presence in the way that I had expected you to. And by giving them this direct lesson and I like these phrases where it says, um, the Gentiles like to lord it over others, take advantage of them. And then these words of scripture, but is, it is not so among you. It is not so. And then Jesus goes on and tells them why it's not so. Because you are to present yourself not as a dominant uh, overseer. You are to present yourself as a servant. And we talked earlier about what that might mean to be, be a, a, a servant. So Jesus then goes on in another spate and where the, the humbleness of Christ and the kind of fleshing out what this means to be a servant. I like these most beautiful words from uh, scripture, and this is in uh, Philippians. As <clears throat> and hear these words. Let each of you look not only to your own interest, but to the interest of others. In other words, it's not all about you. It's about you taking an active part in the interest of others. Hear these. Have this mind among yourselves, which was also in Christ Jesus, who though he was in the form of God, did not account equality with God a thing to be grasped, but he emptied himself, taking the form of a servant, being born in the likeness of men, and being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even death on a cross. So, yes, that was the chat that Jesus felt those disciples needed to have when even at this stage of the game, they could be wanting to sort of exploit their relationship and seeking some grand and glorious uh, place for themselves. So the, the other thing, after Jesus you know, said these words about how you have to be not so with, not so with you, you have to be the, humble, uh, the hum, humble servant to those about you, you'd expect, maybe hope, that the disciples would have responded. Would, would have replied to that. Scripture is silent on what the disciples made of Jesus' teaching. I think that's kind of interesting. They were silent. Um, they didn't respond to what he had said. You, you know, when you're a teacher, you hope that you put out something and then people re react to it. And so you have a kind of a give and take. Scripture, at least, doesn't record that they replied. So what I would like to add is that, but let it not be so 
with us. That once we have heard the word, how Jesus said, you are to humble yourselves and be a servant to others. And to think of all the different ways that this church becomes a servant to this community. And all the ways that um, I hope you will ponder and uh, pray about, even in this uh, in interim kind of uh, time that the, that the church is engaged in. So that we not be like the disciples, that we are just left hearing the word, but fail to respond to it. Actually, I'm being a little harsh with the disciples yet, because even though they didn't react to Jesus then, we have it on good faith and authority. These words probably wouldn't be here unless they did respond. So they responded, I would say, rather wholeheartedly. Because it was probably the fire, they became the engine of the Jesus movement, not so far removed from his death. So may God add his blessing, these words of Holy Scripture, their application and reception in our hearts this day. Amen. Sunday and in person and online to worship together to make meaning in the world. Yet our mission to be the church extends beyond these walls and beyond our services together. We are called to care for one another, to give our time, our talents, our treasure to the things that God calls us to into the world. Embracing servant leadership makes a difference in our greater mission of this church. So we thank you for all the ways that you support the church and our wider community. If you wish to donate to our continued missions, you may give digitally or contribute with a retiring collection on the table as you exit the sanctuary. And if you are in a place of urgent need due to the coronavirus, please contact a member of staff to make use of the Deacon's Relief Fund, which we have set aside. For all that you do and all that you give, we thank you for your gifts and your giving. Fashioned and made us, protected and stayed us, who guideth us on to the end of our day. His light goes before us, a pillar of fire shining forth in the night, till shadows have vanished and darkness is banished. As forward we travel from light into light. His law he enforces the stars in their courses, the sun in his orbit obediently shine. The hills and the mountains, the rivers and fountains, the deeps of the ocean proclaim him divine. We rejoicing on the land, rejoicing with glad adoration. A song let us praise till all things now living unite in thanksgiving to God in the highest. Hosanna and praise.
We now come to a time of prayers. And as always, we say our prayers and we will respond, God in your grace or God in your mercy, hear our prayers. Well, I have one uh, prayer from uh, Elizabeth de Mazinet, who was sent in to thank the church for our continued involvement in supporting her with her conflict that she had with a neighbor. So she wanted to thank everybody for your continued support. This is a prayer for myself. Um, I'll be having a colonoscopy this Wednesday, and so just prayers that I can find out what's been giving me trouble for, for a while, hopefully get a resolution, or at least find out what's going on. Oh, and there's one from Rick, there's one from Rick Dove, prayer for thanks for the wonderful yellow, orange, and red colors seen in nature this time of year in autumn. We pray for you and for your upcoming procedure that everything goes well, and if there is anything, that it is something that is treatable and easily taken care of. God, in your grace and mercy, hear our prayer. And for the prayer of nature that we always enjoy hearing, God, in your grace, hear our prayers. Got a call on Wednesday. My sister uh, Drew was released from the hospital and sent to rehabilitation. And she called me Friday evening. She is doing much better. They took the staples out of her leg and she's making good progress. We continue to pray for your sister and are thankful that she is improving and able to move into recovery. God, in your grace and mercy, yeah. for our prayers. My friend Marcy, who we have been praying for, starts a radiation treatment beginning Monday for five weeks, and she has to drive up to Baltimore to Johns Hopkins every single weekday. So this is going to be tough, tough, tough for her. But she is, not to say excited, but grateful that she has qualified for this and that she's, her body is able to, to go through with this. So. Uh, I would like prayers for Marcy and uh, her treatments. We pray with you, continuing to pray for your friend Marcy and all that she has had to endure in her treatments, being thankful for all of the technology, all of the science, all of the caregivers that help us through these rough times, but also understanding that this is a very, very rough time and is a very experimental thing that may have unknown repercussions. So we pray with you, we pray with her to continue her care and hope that these have good outcomes. God, in your grace and mercy, yeah. hear our prayers. Good morning. Um, yesterday, I had my first concert for the first time since March of last year. It was so exciting, and it felt really great to perform and to also um, sing with other, I, I, I mean, I know that I'm singing with you all, but to sing with like a full orchestra and everything, and just to be back into the groove of how things were before the pandemic, it was amazing. Although there were restrictions um, as to how many people could attend. But um, it was just great to perform again. And also just prayers. Uh, the market is slowing down as far as um, housing goes. And my roommate and I are looking for a place. And uh, as we get closer to the holidays, less people are selling or renting because they want to get settled for Thanksgiving and Christmas. So uh, just prayers for that, that we're able to find something before the holidays so we can also celebrate with our families. We pray with you and thanks for the reopening of different abilities to meet together, to sing, to have performances, and to enjoy one another's presence. God, in your grace, hear our Amen. prayer. We also pray with you and your roommate for being able to find housing for all those who are struggling with housing right now. And may everyone be able to find a place to be housed, to be able to afford it, to be able to be safe in this world. So God, in your grace and mercy, hear our prayers.
have an additional prayer online from Laura. Praise that her father's white blood cell count is rising, and as long as the progress continues, he'll be discharged charged this week to continue healing at home. Laura, we pray with you for your father's continued healing, for his ability to come home and be taken care of, and for your entire family as you support him in this time. God, in your grace and mercy, hear our prayer. My husband celebrated his 80th birthday yesterday. That is an amazing thing, so happy birthday. God, in your grace. It's got one other. Praise that vaccines for kids age 5 to 11 are authorized. Prayers for continued protection and safety for all. Amen. So, <laughs> prayers, thank you for uh, the vaccine, for all of the parents who are breathing a sigh of relief, for being able to vaccinate their children and provide just a little bit more safety for each of us in this world. God, in your grace and mercy, yeah. hear our prayers. Let us conclude with the prayer for peace. O loving God, spirit of hope and peace, lead us from death to life, lead us from falsehood to truth, lead us from despair to hope, from fear to trust, lead us from hate to love, from war to peace. Let peace fill our hearts, our world, our universe. Peace, peace, peace. Go forth now into the world in peace. Hold fast to that which is good. Render to no one evil for evil. Rather, strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. Love and serve the Lord, rejoicing always in the power of God's Holy Spirit, which is mightily at work in your being. Amen. Amen. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, Christ and the love, love of God, God and, and the, the companionship of, of the Holy Spirit, Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen.
been good to be with you, Chris. guys. <laughs> Have a blessed week. <laughs> Thank you. Holy.